Just a little over a year ago, I purchased this Meagear portable charger for my BMW i3, and I have been pretty happy with it. But it can only do 16 amps. So today I'm checking out its bigger brother, the Meagear Pika 40 amp portable charging station. Is it worth paying almost double for this unit? Let's find out. This charging station comes in a handy carrying case so you can easily store it in the trunk or the front of your car in case you choose to take it on the road with you. In the bag we get the user manual, the dock and hook for storing the nozzle and the cable, hardware for mounting brackets and of course the charger itself. First thing I notice is the thickness and that the quality of the cable is really good. The unit is also more compact than I was expecting but it does weigh quite a bit. The quality feel continues to the nozzle. It has more of a unique design with the release button integrated into the body of the nozzle. I also like how it holds the cover in place unlike all of my other chargers. The NEMA 1450 plug doesn't disappoint and doesn't look like a homemade project that I've seen on some other chargers. However, I was expecting a NEMA 515 adapter otherwise known as the standard 110 volt plug to be included in case we wanted to use a 110 volt outlet in an emergency but there wasn't one so you have to have a NEMA 1450 outlet to use this out of the box lastly the bracket for mounting the charger on the wall is included which makes it easy to keep it organized to install it simply mark four holes on the wall where you want it to be installed drill those holes and hammer in the included drywall anchors. Screw the bracket into the anchors until secure and it's installed. If you ever hunt a picture on the wall, you can probably install this as well. The charger then simply slots into the mount and we're done. For some reason the display is not playing well with my camera, but it looks really nice to the naked eye and there is no lines moving up and down. But there are a couple of things you can do with this besides the information that's presented here at the top. So we have the temperature, it's at 60 degrees, so basically in this area in my garage, or 15 C, and we have 242 or 41 volts coming in. Now here at the top, we can change the amperage or the current, so we can go from 12, and if we just press this button, we can go to 16, 24, 32, or 40 amps. Just as easy as that to set different amperages. Love it. Some other devices, you have to use a little screw on the side or even in the back, so you have to take the device off not here this just kind of works with these two buttons and then the other selection is going to be your delay for when it starts using so this is super helpful for uh, when you have cheaper rates at night so when you get home let's say at six you can set it to start charging six hours later which is going to be at midnight and then you just hit select and that's it now you can just plug your car in and then six hours later it will start getting some juice some of you may be asking, why do I even need a level 2 40 amp charger? Well, there are a lot of reasons why it makes sense to get the fastest charger your electrical outlet allows. But the simplest one is that it's much faster. How much faster? Well, let me show you. We know that level 1 110 volt chargers safely max out at 12 amps. So let's see how long it would take to charge up my BMW i3 with a pretty tiny battery so this is level one let's plug it in how long do we think it's going to take to charge up this bmw i3 on level one well it's 4 20 p.m right now and it's telling us it's gonna be finished at 9 a.m tomorrow so that's 17 hours from now it will take 17 hours to go from 17 and a half percent to 100 just switching to 240 volts at 12 amps our time is decreased by almost seven and a half hours and now the charging would be done at 1 22 a.m right it's still 4 23 so it's only three minutes later but yeah that's a big difference i have now selected 40 amps let's plug it in as you can see the difference is dramatic and the fast charging speed really removes the range anxiety from owning a short range EV. I know I can get home from work and it will be 100% charged by the time I need to leave in the morning but I also know it will have enough charge in a couple of hours for me to take my wife to dinner. In short it can charge over twice as fast as my old level 2 charger 
and over three times faster than level one charging. So looking at the estimate from the car itself, we are now going to be done in only four hours and 20 minutes. We went from basically 17 hours to four hours. That's over three times faster using this charger. To be very clear, this BMW i3 cannot charge at 40 amps, but it sure can at 28 amps. So as you can see at the moment, it's using 28 amps, which is about 6.7 kilowatts. Um, this car maxes out at 7.7, .7, I believe, but this charger will go up to 40 amps as long as your car supports it. So yeah, I just wanted to make sure that's very clear. And looking at the screen once it's charging, Obviously, we get a little animation here, but I really do like that it's telling you how many kilowatts it is charging at and how many kilowatt hours it has already put into the car. So at the moment, it's only been four or five minutes and we already put 0.36 kilowatt hours into the car. So 370 watts. All right, so it's about 8.30 now and we've been charging for a little over four hours. And as we can see, we are only charging at three amps. So that's telling me that the car is basically in the high 90s where it's just kind of trickle charging the battery and doing some of the maintenance work. So it's only 0.76 of a kilowatt and we have so far put in 10.6 kilowatt hours into the battery. Let's go see what the car says. As I mentioned, it's 8.30 and we are just about done at 100%. So now it's basically just maintaining the battery and it still uses some uh, wattage and amperage to do that. But pretty cool. It finished pretty much right on time. As we can see, we are at 100%. So it's 830 and we are at 100% charge. I have used this Mi Gear Pika to charge up my BMW i3 a few times now. And so far it has performed as expected. It happily provides as much current as my car could possibly accept and will easily do more if your car can charge faster than 7.7 .7 kilowatts. There are tons of different chargers on the market, but what makes this one special? Well, I think this one's very competitively priced for the power it can provide as well as the features such as the adjustable current. The fact that you can easily switch the power limit on the front of the unit using a nice display is great and allows you to adjust this charger to the electrical limitations you may have. If your receptacle is rated at 30 amps, you'd set the power limit on here to 24 amps to be safe. Other safety features built into this unit include overheating detection, current overflow detection, power surge protection, low voltage cutoff, current leakage detection, and more. I also like that it has intelligent delay, so it should save some money by allowing you to charge at night. We also get a 25 foot cable, which can't be cheap at this quality and thickness. I was able to easily reach from the garage to the back of the car, even when I'm not parked very close. As you can see, the connector and the control box can be used outside in the snow, and in the rain without any issues. Of course, this is using the J1772 EV standard that everyone in the US is using, well, other than early Nissan Leafs and Teslas, although you can get an adapter for Teslas and it will happily charge those as well. But basically it will work on any modern EV. One negative with a high capacity 25 feet thick cable is that it does get a little heavy if you want to pack it up and take it with you. I also wish I had a true smart functionality where I could control it with my phone, but I'm not even sure how often I would actually use that. If you'd like to check out my other EV chargers, why not click on this video? And if you want to learn 10 things, you didn't know about my BMW i3, click on this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave your comments and questions down below and I'll see you in the next one.